What's up, Kyle Gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So let's solve this problem. So we have a steel A is bound to brass B, and we're given a moment that's being applied to this whole cross section. So we're given the modulus elasticity of both of these. Our goal is to find the maximum bending stress in both the brass and the steel. So what's happening here is we have this composite system, right? We have brass and we have steel, and we need to basically find the bending stress of them combined. And to do that, we need to replace one of them with an equivalent amount to the other so we can actually take the moment of inertia correctly. Uh, so we're going to use this method. So we're going to use a conversion factor N. So N is our conversion factor, and it's equal to the modulus elasticity of steel over the modulus elasticity of brass. So the reason we're doing it this way, and you can totally do it the other way. It's going to be just fine if you do it the other way. But we're going to replace steel with an equivalent amount of brass. And that's what this equation is saying. The new base of the steel is going to be equivalent to the conversion factor times the base of the brass. Uh, actually, I meant to do this the other way. What does she mean? Brass, steel. All right, so let's find that conversion factor. It'll be pretty simple. So the E of the steel is 200. The E of the brass, uh, modulus plasticity, is 100. So that gives us that N. I'm going to write it over here. N is equal to to do. So now we go over here. The base of our new brass, we're looking at block A basically. What's the new width of this if it were brass? It is equal to 2 times the base of it as steel. So we know its base is currently 175. So of course that's going to be 375 or 350. Of course, millimeters. So let's chart what our new image looks like. I'm going to go ahead and do it over here. So it doesn't really matter. But this is going to become a lot wider now. Uh, I'm just going to incorporate that, I guess. And this new base now, this is now 350 millimeters. So we've kind of changed the problem up now. But now instead of A being steel, it's now brass, just like the blue part is. So we can now take the moment of inertia of this object. So now we can solve this like any other normal problem, and then when we find the bending stress, we're going to have to do one more conversion factor at the end. So of course we're going to be, if we're finding the bending stress, the equation for bending stress, I'm going to write that, I'm going to go ahead and erase this, the equation for bending stress is m, the moment, times the radius from the center to the moment of inertia around the centroid. Of this object. So we need to first find the center in the y direction of this. So that's going to be y bars. We're going to label that. All right? We're going to basically be doing the equation for y bar is the sum of the distance times its area of the object over the sum of the areas. So we have two objects here, right? We have this and this. We need to find the center of each object and multiply it by the area. So for the first one here, the height of its centroid, right? It's going to be a square, so it's going to be half of that 200. So we're going to do 100 millimeters, and then the area of this object is base times height, the 175 times 200. Then we're going to add it to the next one. So the centroid of this red object is going to be 200 plus half of 50, 225. And then, of course, it's base times width, so its base is out of 350, and its height is 50. So then we need to divide it by the total area. That's going to be 175. We're looking at the bottom block. Then we're going to add that to the area of the next block, which is 350 over 50. So you do this, you get that y bar is equal to 141.67 millimeters. So now we need to find moment of inertia. So moment of inertia around the axis that we just found. So of course the equation for this is the sum of this, our sum of i bar plus area distance in the y squared. So that is basically, the. this is what you find in the back of the book. Then the distance is the y area is the distance to the centroid, basically the distance away from that. So we're going to go ahead and like our numbers. So uh, i bar for a rectangle, right? These are both rectangles. It's going to be 1 over 12 uh, base times height cubed. So we're going to have to sum these up, and then we're going to have to sum up area distance in the y squared. So let's do this first of all. So we're going to start by doing both of these first, so we can factor out the 1 over 12. So let's look at the blue one first. So its base is 100 
75 millimeters, and its height is 200 millimeters. So we're going to do 200 cubed. Then we're going to add that to the red one. So the red one has a base of 350 and a height of 50. So we're going to cube that 50. Okay, so we've done this part. So now we need to do an area of distance in the Y. So let's look at the blue one first. The area is obviously 175 times 200. Then distance in the Y, that's going to be the distance from its centroid to the centroid of the whole shape. So we know that this is the centroid of the whole shape, and we know that the centroid of this block itself is 100. So if we want to do that, we can do 100 minus that total centroid, 141.67 square all that. That's why it doesn't matter if it's negative, it's going to be positive anyway. So then our next one, uh, we're doing the red shape, so it's going to be uh, 50 times 350. Then its centroid, right, we said earlier was 225, so we're going to do 225 minus the shape's centroid, 141.67 squared. Let me write through this, make sure I didn't do an error wrong. Uh, looks like I'm doing it right. Yes, sir. Yeah, it looks good. Okay. So if you calculate this, I'm going to write it up here. Moment of inertia around that is, uh, so you, or I guess you would get it first in millimeters, right? Uh, you get it first in 302 times 10 to the 6 millimeters to the 4th. But we want it in meters because we were using the correct units. So you're going to get 3.02 times 10 to the negative fourth meters to the fourth. So there we go, now we have all of these things that we need to plug into this equation. So now I'm gonna go ahead and erase. Now that we've done all of this work, let's find out what's going on. So let's start with the brass first of all. So we're finding the maximum bending stress in the brass. So uh, forget that this, we, we have this, this is the steel up here and then this is the brass. So we're gonna do this equation. So starting with the brass. So it's the moments. So we give it the moments, six, uh, 6.5 kilometers, so it's gonna be 6,500 newton meters. Then C, so what is C? C is the distance, basically the furthest away from the centroid we can find. So we know that the centroid is about here with the height of 141.67 millimeters. So if we're going away from this, but staying on the brass section, if we go up, we can only go about 60 millimeters before we get away from this. But if we go down uh, from this line here, we can go with that total distance, 141.67 millimeters. This is the furthest distance away from the centroid, basically, the furthest from the bending, and that's where the most bending stress in the brass is gonna be. So we're gonna plug in that number, 0.14167. Find that the denominator goes our inertia. So we're going to do 3.02 times 10 to the negative fourth. I'll make sure I did that right. Looks good. So then you're going to find that to the maximum uh, shear stress of the brass is equal to 3.04 10 to the sixth pascals. Right, so now we need to find it for the steel. So now we're looking at the steel object here. So the moment stays the same, 6,500 newton meters. Now the distance is gonna change. Uh, the distance now is the furthest we can find to the steel. So there's obviously the distance up to the steel, and then if we go further, we can reach the top. So the top of this steel is the furthest distance away from the centroid where the bending moment is gonna act, and that is gonna be our biggest stress point, is the furthest away. So we need to find this distance, Obviously, it's the height from the bottom is 250 millimeters, this 200 plus this 50, and then we can subtract that from this number to find this height here. So we're going to plug in 0 0.250 and then subtract 0 0.14167. Then again, our uh, moment of inertia is the same number, 3.02, 10 to the negative fourth. And one more thing before we do this. Uh, because we are converting back to steel, right? I said we need to do one more conversion factor. Because we assumed this was brass and we found the moment of inertia, we need to do one more conversion factor to get us back. And so we're gonna multiply all of this by N, that conversion factor we found earlier. So we're just gonna multiply it by two to get the steel back from the brass. So you do this equation, and you get that this is 4.565 
I'm just going to start over. 4.65 times 10 to the 6th pascals. Sweet. So there we go. So we have one more part of this problem. We need to find the stress where they're bonded. So we're finding the stress at that 200 millimeter part right there. So the, when you're using this equation, all of the equation is going to be the same basically. This distance is going to be the same for both of them because we're finding it at the same distance. Uh, the only difference is that one of them is going to have a conversion factor. The steel is going to be twice as large as the brass. So let's find the brass at point, uh, I guess at bond, right? We can label that. So again, the moment is uh, 6,500. The distance this time is going to be the distance from this 200 point down to here. So we can take that to 0 0.2 and subtract that uh, y bar. And then we're going to divide it by the moment of inertia, 3.02 times 10 to the negative fourth. So you do this equation. Uh, let's do a brass at bond. However you want to write this is equal to 1.25 10 to the sig pascals. And then if you want to find the steel at the bond, we're just going to take the brass at the bond and we're going to multiply it by n, right, that conversion factor, basically getting it back from the brass to the steel. So we're just we're going to multiply this number by 2, and you're going to get that this is 2.51 times 10 to the sig pascals. And there we go, we found every part of this problem. So that's how you solve this problem. It's uh, not actually that tricky, but we're getting to the point where it's a lot of work, so it's easy to lose track of where we're at. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. Thanks for all your support. Uh, check out my playlist, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.